Well, good evening, everybody, and Merry Christmas. Great to have you with us. I know it's a busy time of the year, so we're grateful that you set aside this hour to be with us and spend some time just reflecting on the goodness of the Lord. You know, it's this time of year when you step back into some of those uh, great scripture passages. Uh, Matthew 1, verse 23. His name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. We think of places like John 1, uh, verse 14, speaking of the Word of God, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, actually became and lived here among us. And so we're just going to take some time and we're just going to reflect on that and we're going to think about some of these things that are the great things that, that we share and teach during this time of the year. So here's my request for you. I want you just to relax. The team has done a fantastic job of providing something for you just to receive from. So relax is the first thing. Secondly, I'd ask you to reflect. There's going to be some very significant things that are going to be sung in the music and said and just even portrayed in drama in front of you. And uh, carefully consider and reflect on the significance of that which is shared with you. And then ultimately, we're going to rejoice together because God has done some great things. So thanks for being with us and enjoy your time together with us tonight. In the 28th generation from King David, in the time of Herod, a miracle happened that would fulfill a promise which was from the beginning. Once and for all, and for all time, a savior was born in the city of David. The one that would redeem mankind to his creator and the promise of heaven. The prophets of old spoke of his coming. From the womb of a virgin unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government of peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward and even to forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We invite you to stand and worship with us.
worship Christ Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you for this precious gift. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You can be seated.
Well, it's wonderful just to hear that passage of Scripture read from Isaiah chapter 9 and then for us to sing those songs together. And then it's especially good to hear the kids sing. And it's especially good to, to watch the children sing. Is it not true? That's the case. Uh, you know, one of the things that's my responsibility as a pastor is each year as we head into the Advent season to take a fresh look at the story of Christmas and the biblical account of Christmas and and try to discern a little bit about what God is saying to us through this year and what he wants to speak to us in this time that we are in. And so I would have done that, of course, earlier and, and uh, thinking of places like Isaiah chapter 9, Matthew 1 and 2 tells a little bit of the story almost from uh, Matthew's or J Joseph's perspective, a little bit of the earthly heritage of Joseph and the visit of the Magi and so forth. Then Luke 1 and 2 uh, has, a, has a lot to do with uh, the actual birth of John the Baptist and of Jesus and the interaction with Mary and so forth. And so as I looked at those texts and other ones as well, I came to see that there are four times in the Christmas story in which these words are spoken, fear not. So let me just kind of share them with you in kind of the order in which they happen actually in the Christmas story. The very first time it happens, it's in John, or sorry, Luke chapter 1, and it's spoken to, it's words spoken to Zechariah. Now, Zechariah was a priest for what he did for a living, it's what his life was. So his, his, as a priest, he ministered to the people on behalf of God and ministered to God on behalf of people. And the word was spoken to Zechariah as he ministered. It said, fear not, for your prayers have been heard. How many of you would say, like, there's times when you aren't quite sure that your prayers are being heard? Just go ahead. It's okay to go ahead and raise your hand. I'm raising my hand not just as an example, but I'm admitting that sometimes I wonder. And then even in the case of Zacharias, you know, he had ministered and there were certain prayer uh, needs that he held before the Lord for literally for decades that were never answered. And so Zacharias was an older man. Him and his wife never had children together and never had children and so there was a prayer that he held before the Lord and just never came to fruition until late in life. I love the way the translation of the Bible that I use says this. It says very lovingly and very kind of his wife that she was advanced in years. So I've decided that I'm taking that on for myself. That's a biblical. I'm not getting older. I'm just getting more advanced, right? So just... Feel free, you can use that. You can have that for yourself. I just say, no, I'm just advanced is what it actually is. Your prayers have been heard. The second time it comes to the surface is when the angel speaks to Mary and he appears before her and she's frightened and he says, fear not for you have found favor with God. And favor is one of those words, it's a biblical word, it's kind of hard to describe. It's almost as if I, if I tried to describe what favor was. It's God's goodwill intention towards you that's obvious to you and to everyone else. Like it's just the favor of the Lord on you. And again, some of us would say, where do I sign up to be, you know, favored of the Lord? Like I, wanna, I want that. And before you go too far, like in thinking you're excluded, please remember Luke chapter 2 simply says, goodwill towards men on whom his favor rests. So in other words, it's for all. Uh, we all have an opportunity. We all have access to his favor. The third time it comes to the surface is actually is being spoken to Joseph. It's in Matthew chapter 1, and I believe it's in verse 20, in which Joseph, as a young man, probably about 16 or 17 years old, prepared to start his life with this young lady that he's, he's uh, betrothed to. Her name is Mary. But then it comes to the surface that she's actually with child. And can you imagine a young man being confused because he knows the character of the young woman that he's desiring to spend his life with and how can this possibly be? And an angel appears before him and says, fear not, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Or the way that I would say that is, fear not, God has a plan. He's got a plan for your life that you don't understand right now. It's okay, God ultimately has a plan. And I don't want to read the last one of these four. Which is, this is from Luke chapter 2, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to, Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he is of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. 
And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and lied him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel of the Lord said, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards mankind, on whom his favor rests. You have to use your imagination a little bit because I want to describe a little bit what's happening there in Luke chapter 2. If you can imagine being shepherds out in a place where you're all alone, it's very, very dark. Like most places around here, when you look up into the night sky, it is somewhat affected by light pollution, lights that are around us. There's no lights, there's no light pollution, completely dark. If the stars were out or if it was a moon lit light, you can imagine how bright the sky was just by the stars and the moon and so forth. And then, and not only is it dark, it's also quiet. They're keeping watch over their flocks so that no harm comes to them. And in the midst of that, an angel of the Lord appears. Now, it says that the glory of the Lord shone around them. Now, you might think of an angel like they would emanate light and there would be light that would be around them, but it's actually more than just simply light because a light casts a shadow. So a light comes from a certain direction and there's a shadow behind you. But here it says, it didn't say it was light, it was glory. And throughout Scripture, there's different places where the Bible speaks about the glory of the God as actually having substance. There's, there's something tangible about it that we can't explain. And it says that it shone around them, like it didn't cast a shadow, like the glory of the Lord enveloped them. Fear not, for I bring you good news, which is for everyone. A Savior has been born to you. And after the announcement was made, even beyond that, an even greater thing, it's almost like if you can just imagine this, which I, I think that it's impossible for us to fully imagine what this was like. But the curtain of heaven was torn open. And it says there that there was then in the heavenly suddenly a multitude, thousands, these things, thousands upon thousands upon thousands, a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards mankind on whom his favor rests. Fear not. Your prayers are being heard. Fear not, you have found favor with the Lord. Fear not, God has a plan. Might be different than yours, but God has a plan. And fear not, there is good news for all in Christ Jesus. It could be that you can relate to one of those four that you would think, okay, that's great to have God speaking those words, fear not, into me. But it could be that you have places of fear that are just different than that. Well, our time together is not over, but just let me close this section by reading from Isaiah chapter 9, beginning in verse 6. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall accomplish this. Not be afraid, Zachariah. Mary. 
You are favored by the Lord. The Lord is with you. Fear not, Joseph, son of David. Fear, Fear not. Your prayers have been heard, Zachariah. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and he shall be called John. And he will fill people with joy and gladness. Many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born and return many people back to the Lord their God. Do not send Mary away. Do not be afraid to take her as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Joseph, do not be afraid. For you are highly favored in the sight of the Lord. Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. Your son John will go before the Lord with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will persuade the hearts of the people to accept, accept wisdom and prepare the way for the Lord. How, how shall this be? I am an old man, and my wife is beyond childbearing years. What proof is there of this? I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. I was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings, which will be fulfilled in their own time. And your son will be a great man. How, how can this be, since I'm a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy Child will be, be called, called Son of, of God. God. The, the Lord God, God shall give him the throne of David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins. Therefore, Joseph, do not be afraid to do these things which I have spoken. Even now indeed, your relative Elizabeth also has conceived a son even in her old age. For now this is the sixth month for her in which she was called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to what you have spoken. of great joy which is to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord this is how you'll recognize him the infant will be wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger glory to God in the highest and to all the earth peace goodwill to all
worship the King of Kings with us.
invite you to go ahead and take your seats for a moment. So the message of this Advent series, season, fear not. Fear not your play, prayers are being heard. They have been heard. Fear not you have found favor with the Lord. Fear not God has a plan, maybe different than yours. And fear not there is good news for all people through Jesus Christ. Fear not. Maybe one of those four areas actually speaks to you and is relevant to you today. Maybe they're not. Maybe there's another area in your life. And that's okay because, you know, some folks who like to count things that are in the Bible would simply say the most um, repeated command of Scripture is to fear not. And 365 times that's actually in Scripture. And it's, a, it's oftentimes paired with the most repeated promise for God is with you. And he's there, he's actually there with you as well. So maybe those four speak to it, maybe it's, it's a different area as well. But the same so word, two words, fear not, uh, apply. Fear not, and uh, you can say that and you can say, wow, that's easier said than done, right? That's not real, actually very helpful. But you need to know there's actually, fear is not something you just simply just get rid of. Fear is actually something that's displaced by something else. Let me just share this illustration. So if I walk up to the sink with an empty glass of water and I want to fill it with water so I can have a drink, and I walk up and we would say the glass is empty, but the glass is actually not empty. It's full of air. But when you pour water into it, the water going into the glass actually displaces the air, and now I have a glass full of water. Well, the fear in our lives is actually just not something that we get rid of. It's actually something that is displaced by something else. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. So what I'm going to ask you to do is two things. As we just take a moment in our service and we spend a little bit of time just reflecting on a few things. And as the light comes your direction, I will just simply ask you two questions. One is, is there an area of your life that you're experiencing, experiencing some fear? And it's okay just simply to admit that before the Lord. Trust me, God already knows that in advance anyhow. But then even as we want to turn from that fear, what we're asking the Lord to do is would he impart his love to us? Would there be a fresh impartation or a fresh revelation or a fresh understanding of the love of the Lord in that area of our lives that actually ends up displacing that fear that is present? So as we take this moment and you have a moment just to spend time before the Lord and as the group behind me sings over you, would you just take a moment, acknowledge the fear that may be present and invite the love of the Lord to drive that fear out.
let me invite you to pray with me. Lord, we recognize the wonder of those words that have spoken to us, fear not. But we also recognize the challenge of those words to not be afraid. And I thank you, Lord, you've provided a way that fear can be driven out as we receive the love of the Lord in any specific area of our lives. So God, I know that you know every person in the sound of my voice. And even as they reflected for a moment here, like, hey, here's an here's a area of fear in my life. And their invitation for you to come and just share your love in that area and drive out fear. I thank you, God, that you do that, that you're good, and we can trust you with everything and all things. Thank you, Lord, for the wonder of this time of the year where we celebrate Emmanuel, which means God with us, that you, the God of all the universe, would become flesh and dwell among us and actually dwell with us. And so in all that we do in these days and beyond as we look at 2024, when we would never forget that you are always with us in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to do a couple things. First of all, if you would blow that candle out, we'd appreciate that. Thank you. I'm going to invite you to go ahead and stand to your feet. And in a moment, as we close our service out, I'm going to ask you to join back in with that chorus. But before we do, I want to share a couple things with you. If you would just do us a favor and just take that candle and separate the base from the candle. And as you leave today, there's going to be a place for you to put each one of those. And then I have several more requests of you, okay? So first of all, my request would be take a look around at what's happening out in the lobby and up in the cafe. There's music being played in various places and photo booths, one's down here and one up there. So make sure you get a family picture or maybe just with some friends and so forth. So make sure that you, you uh, spend some time around. Secondly, I would ask you that you would eat some cookies, okay? So... You are the final service for today. That means that the doors are locked and you can't leave until all the cookies are all eaten. And it's okay, so I'm telling you, it's just a request. And so, no, actually have a good time. Visit with family and friends. Finally, I would ask that you would uh, just, if you would just give, show your appreciation to the team that's planned so much of today, if you could just say thank you to them for the hard work that went behind that. And then one more thing. Have a great Christmas, and we look forward to a blessed 2024. Thank you.